Hello reformers and welcome back to Fantasy Cow Radia and our pointy hatted dolt, the Bard. Oh yes. So I've been doing a little bit of speech giving in Uxkal, and I decided, hey, oh, you know, they're starting to get a bit tired of me, so I'm gonna leave. And uh, I came over to Ravidin because I actually checked to see where a nearby tournament was, and it's here. So I thought to myself, okay. How are we going to make money with the exception of giving performances and things? Well, we could potentially do a tournament. I mean, I've leveled up nothing really in the way of, oh dear, combat proficiencies and things like that. So who knows? Maybe we're going to have a good time or maybe we're going to have a bad time. I just felt like some of the time you're not really getting as much money as you'd want and it's going to take a little bit too long for me to get what I need. So if I can go into the tournament, win about, I don't even know, 15, 20,000, something like that, I'll be able to get at least one Weavery and Dye Works and that will get us going in a pretty nice way. Because at the moment, my troop wages are pretty expensive. So if I could do that, then maybe we'll be in a pretty decent position. Anyway. Four teams with six fighters each. Let's see how the Bard does in an actual battle. Because this is his first battle, isn't it? Alright, let's do this. Okay, I have I have it. I have it under control. Don't worry, I am the pointy hat adult. And as you can see, I've already eliminated Kratos. And suffice it to say, we know we, we all know Kratos. Kratos is a rather powerful enemy. And, uh, well, he doesn't seem to be doing very much this time around. And I'm actually kind of surprised that I've been able to do as much damage as I have. So, I'm pretty impressed. Wow. Actually, very impressed. Look at that. We just killed a hired blade. Wow. That is insane. That is really quite amazing. I'm actually very surprised that we are still living. And I can actually mount on this horse, if I so desire, to do a little bit extra damage here and there. Like, for example, killing that hired blade. And then I got killed. But... Still, the first round of this tournament is looking very, very healthy indeed. Two teams with four fighters each. Let's see if we're able to do a little bit of extra damage here. Whoa, that was that was wonderful. Do you see how much damage he did there? One damage. Ah, uh, yes, not very good, not very good. But I think we should be fine as long as we're able to continually... Oh no, that is an orc. If ever I saw one, that is indeed an orc. We might have some issues with that orc. Or, never mind, we just might have an issue with that swashbuckler. Oh dear, we've been eliminated. Well, that was easy, wasn't it? Uh, okay, so it seems like I'm just going to have to perform then. Yes, I've been giving performances and speeches to raise my right to rule as well, because I actually had no idea that right to rule was a thing that you can actually gain from speeches. But it is, and I now have... 28 in right to rule and well we started with i think zero so we gained a plus 28 literally just from speeches which is pretty insane if i do say so myself anyway we are going to continue improving our charisma until we have maxed out entertainment leadership i'd like to get a little bit more persuasion as well but obviously not right now let's just improve our other skills here just going to try and make sure that we are as even as possible when it comes to you know, our proficiencies so that we can use basically anything that we so desire. And how much money do we actually have now? We can, of course, start selling a couple of leatherworks and things like that. And we can travel to town and villages and, you know, all that sort of thing. But at the moment, I don't know whether it's really necessary because I could just stay here and continue to give speeches and complex things. I mean, you can see here, this was not very good. This was not very good at all. So as you can see, I lost 20 renown. Hopefully I'll be able to gain that back in just a second. Ooh, five renown, yeah. So it's very, very, it's kind of random how much you're gonna gain, obviously, but I have gained numerous times five right to rule and 20 renown, which is insane in itself. So there we go, we gained a little bit of a little bit extra there. I'm gonna try and just earn a little bit extra cash here as well. And uh, it's a bit annoying when it fails, obviously. I'd like to gain just a little bit, even if... There we go, there's uh, 750, that's a little bit better. And raising our party's morale is pretty fantastic too. 
but when it goes down, that's obviously not very good. And now, a lot of people have declared war recently in the world of Calradia, and so I'm not entirely sure what's currently going on, because there's so many wars going on that every, everyone's just like, oh, I'm going to attack you, and I'm going to attack you, and so on and so forth, and it's just a bit of a mess. So I'm going to take a look at the faction relations reasonably soon, just so that you can actually see what's going on. But we're gaining some decent amounts of gold here, but we are seeming to fail, well, basically every other time. So it's basically a 50% chance to fail, which is a bit weird. And oh my, that's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. I don't think I can actually do that. Let's just recruit some Calradians. I have enough renown to be able to have a pretty large army. And I did say that we were going to fight a couple of things, didn't I, in this episode? So we might as well. So let's try and find... Ooh, where are some large parties? Actually, undead. Yes, the undead usually have some pretty large parties, but I don't want to be fighting death knights or anything like that. I personally feel like death knights would probably be the death of us. Uh-huh. Yes. So let's see if we can just do a little bit here. Yes, 690, thank you. And our morale is above average at the moment, so I guess that's okay. Let's go to Slezk over there and see if we can take advantage of the specialty that the village currently has. Ah, sells tools for a low price, 299. Uh, yeah, that's not, in my opinion, that low. So I'm just going to leave it because from what I can tell, you can basically gain about an 80 dinar profit from those if you get maximum which is not exactly great so just gonna leave it for now we're gonna go to all of these places just to uncover them on the map and to get a little bit of extra experience as well now if we could find some undead that would be fantastic or we maybe could just find some tiger bandits that would be pretty good too ah who is that oh wow look at look at this they're, they're making peace all the time and oh wow it's just absolutely crazy ah there's some man hunters okay never mind i thought they might be the tiger bandits but no such luck let's just continue to go ah eh, yeah okay so here's the thing i'd love to be able to recruit and take advantage of these well-trained and equipped troops at various villages but i think that's probably not going to be a thing because the bard in my opinion, what I've outlaid, you know, what I've actually sort of determined is that the Bard will be a character that only recruits from taverns and only recruits from towns to get Calradians so that we can reform uh, the Calradian Empire. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, I think that's, uh, yeah, that's, that sounds like a pretty good plan to me anyway. So I'm going to try and find some bandits and maybe perform a little bit at Kudan. Alright, so I have found some Tundra Bandits. Unfortunately, they were, well, they were right in front of us, basically. But because of my low spotting skill, I w or I would assume my low spotting skill, I was unable to see them. So, yeah. Anyway, this is going to be our second combat scenario, but it's obviously going to be increasing in frequency, I suppose you could say. Because eventually we're going to have to level these guys up. And I don't have a very good trainer skill right now. I'm going to need to level that up as well. So I'm probably, once I'm getting to, what, I don't know, maybe 24? Maybe 24 charisma or something like that? Probably try to start leveling up intelligence. And then we'll get a little bit of trainer skill there. Or what we could do instead is just level up a couple of our companions to use trainer skill. Because, I mean, that is technically a party skill, and they can all benefit from it. It does stack as well, so, you know, it would be maybe a bit advantageous for us to, you know, take note of what kind of companions we have. Because I think maybe some of them already have trainer skill. From what I can tell, they don't, but I think maybe we could find some. That would be kind of nice, anyway. So, yeah, that was extremely easy. And they were unable to actually deal any damage to us. And our party limit has been reached. So unfortunately, I will be unable to take this farmer with us. But I don't really mind too much about that. I think that's absolutely fine. All right. So the specialty here allows you to buy some products for a cheap price. No, it doesn't. Thank you. Yes. Anyway, let's uh, let's give them one-handed weapons, shields. And what is what is Kevtil good at? I have no idea, but he can upgrade his armor and his horse if he so desires. And I think 
We don't want to do that with the demon, do we? Because he summons the things that he wants to use. So that's absolutely fine. Let's just make Jeremus get upgrades. And that should be fine as well. And what about Marnid? Yeah, they're all using absolutely awful stuff. So I think it's probably about time that we start to upgrade them a little bit. And yeah, I think Maraga is absolutely fine with the exception of her armor because the Dwarven Sword and the Wooden Shield, I think she could use a better shield. So let's replace the shield. She's using an absolutely fantastic weapon anyway, so that's not really necessary. And Aiden, I actually don't know what to do with him, to be honest, because... I mean, a staff is pretty wizardry, wizardly, majorly, majorly, yes, whatever, but he's not going to be very good in combat, so maybe we should just give him a one-handed and a shield. And if he upgrades his armor, he's going to lose magic. He's going to lose magic modifiers, so I think what I'm going to do is just upgrade him personally, manually, you know, and that's hopefully going to make a difference. So there you go, everyone has been upgraded, so let's let our heroes perform the upgrading. Yes, there we go. And I have absolutely awful stuff as well, so I, it would be a good idea maybe to replace a couple of things. <laughs> oh dear, okay, yes, let's replace that as well. We are technically a bard, so we have to look the part, don't we? But there you go, that should be fine. And Aiden has advanced in level. We have 14 camp followers right there. We have some more Calradian militia. I'm going to be leveling them up into Calradian militia as much as possible. And then we're just going to be going for, I think, Calradian cavalry? Should we go for Calradian cavalry or Calradian infantry? The, th the main problem with that is that if we are going to be a Calradian siege monster then we are going to have to use infantry for the most part. So I suppose we'll do that. But yes, I think Aiden could probably be a pretty nice trainer. So I'm going to be leveling up his magic defense and then trainer. And hopefully he'll be throwing those fireballs, surviving the fireballs, and hopefully training up our troops at the same time. But obviously he is level 2, so doesn't really doesn't really help us out right now. Alright, so I've actually been performing something complex, quote-unquote, at Blazing Hand Temple for quite some time, and that has resulted in us gaining 14,000 dinars, and, well, actually quite a bit of stuff. Yeah, quite a bit of stuff. So let's go and take a walk around the streets and go and buy our weavery and dye works in the Blazing Hand Temple. And there's a reason why I'm buying it here. Probably because I'm not going to be waging war against the Blazing Hand for quite some time, and I very much hope that they're not going to declare war against us. So, let's try and do this. That's 1900. That's really, really nice. I have heard, however, that the mod creator is going to be adding a 5%, shall we say, deterioration rate for every duplicate enterprise that you have in your empire. So in other words, if you have five, you know, weaveries and, and dye works, then you are going to suffer a 25% decrease in income, which is pretty fair, I guess, because at the moment you're still able to gain a huge amount in the tournaments and you're still able to get a huge amount from the weavery and dye works. So it is probably for the best that that is a, you know, decent change, even though, you know, most of us would probably prefer it didn't happen because, you know, <laughs> we want to be swimming in money, but we already have a gnomish bank. That's the point. We already have a gnomish bank, and that is, of course, you know, going to enable us to do whatever we so desire. We can, you know, save up a bunch and, yeah, do whatever we like. So that would be pretty cool anyway. But yes, well, I, uh, I'm actually, yes, there we go. That is the best jester hat that I've ever seen. Fantastic. Okay, so no, I don't actually want to go and speak to the guildmaster. Thank you very much. I'd like to go and just perform... I'd like to perform a speech so that you can actually see the reward for 5 right rule and 20 renown. I'd actually like you to see that because it hasn't been shown on screen just yet. Am I, am I not performing a, a speech? Okay, there you go. Thank you. Do they, do they not like speeches here? It seems like the Blazing Hand Temple does not like speeches. All right, so it seems like I'm going to have to leave. Now, 
I believe that someone said that if you give speeches or something in the Dwarven area, is that true? Hmm, I'm actually unsure about that. Maybe I'm getting the comment incorrectly remembered, but from what I recall, if you give a speech in the Dwarven territories and it fails, then it has a chance to summon up a bunch of angry dwarves and then you enter a fight with said angry dwarves and they have some pretty decent gear and pretty decent loot to be gained from as well so it might be a nice idea for us to do that now i am in a bit of a quandary here because as you can see my weekly wages have just now come up once again and we are now in the danger zone technically so yes hopefully you know kenny loggins will come over and just be like hey uh, here's some cash you know because we currently do not have any and we don't have enough to pay our weekly wage, but hopefully my Reavery and Die Works will come up just in time before the next wage is taken. But there's a huge amount of different things going on. I'm actually wondering whether that has been changed, because it seems to me like factions are a little bit more dynamic, a little bit more aggressive, and a little bit more interactive, shall we say, with each other. Because it seems like they are besieging things very quickly, they're declaring war against everyone, and making peace, and getting, you know, making truces, and trade agreements, and all that sort of thing. And Kevtul apparently does not like the undead. Ah, oh, Marnid, that's where I was headed when the Kurgids got me. People say that the Nords are a bunch of bloodthirsty barbarians, but they have a good head for trade, if you ask me. They make the people line up and down the coast grow flax, which they weave here into linen. It can't compete with Jalkala silks and velvets as a luxury fabric, but it makes good summertime wear, and you can use it for the sails of ships. More importantly, linen was one of the few goods that someone else in Calradia wasn't already making. I had loaded up on saffron, cinnamon, cloves, pepper, and other spices, and a chest full of dinars. I estimated that I could buy linens, furs, velvet, iron, and wool, and the extra horses to carry them back, and I'd still make a profit. I just hadn't figured in the Kurgids who apparently don't care for others cutting in on their monopoly. Oh my. Well, yes. How much do you actually lose? We don't even know how much he actually lost. Anyway, let's perform something here. Ah, there we go. 690 gold. That's helping us a little bit. Let's see if we can get a speech going on here. I'm not entirely sure whether the pop-ups are... No, 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 never mind. Ah, there you go. Your passionate speech reaches the hearts of many. You earn five right to rule and 20 renown. Absolutely fantastic. And do bear in mind that if you fail at a speech, you only lose 20 renown. And look, there's the lynching mob to teach you some manners. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like they are wanting to attack me for some reason. I don't know why, but I'd like them to attack me because apparently that's a really good way of making some money. But yes, as I was saying, you only lose 20 renown. You don't lose the right to rule. So technically... Oh, there's the lynching mob. Oh, they, they run away from me every single time. Probably because I have a pretty large army at the moment but this is a pretty decent way of gaining some levels for our guys because they well there's actually 110 of them and they're pretty low tier just like our guys are you know for the most part most of our people are pretty low level so this is going to gain us a decent amount of experience hopefully and maybe some maybe some loot i doubt they're actually going to give us decent loot but who knows maybe we'll maybe we'll gain something from them they are very easy to kill, as you can see. Even even pointy-hatted Dalt is able to do something here, as you can see. Easy enough. I'm actually thinking, what weapon does a bard use? Hmm. With the exception of, you know, a loot or a lyre or a harp or something like that. You know, with the exception of those things, what is he going to use to hit people over the head with? I don't know. But I, I guess we're going to have to find out. And maybe we'll... I, I don't know, maybe we can find something in the Four Ways in Something that sounds remarkably bard-like. You know, because... <laughs> I did see that comment, by the way, that said, Hmm, we should probably use a bard-ish. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's so awful that it's good. You know, it's one of those. Anyway. This seems pretty easy, so far. As you can see, we've not really been able to suffer any casualties which is absolutely fine with me and we're able to maybe get our one-handed weapon proficiency up a little bit our demon is leveling up which is quite nice 
And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm getting some little bit of experience myself, which I suppose is always decent. It's always good to get yourself a little bit of experience every now and again. And unfortunately, oh, oh, thank you very much, peasant woman. Yes, helping me out a little bit there. Oh, my accuracy with crossbows is absolutely despicable. Oh, never mind. It seems like I was able to get a little bit of a hit on there. And maybe I can go for the kill. Predator sight engaged. Ah, no. Apparently I don't have heat-seeking missiles or anything like that. Certainly not. Far from it. Oh my. Okay, well, there you go. That was actually very easy. Two of us were eliminated, but that is okay. Because do bear in mind that we can go to any tavern and most likely find some mercenaries or maybe some hired blades. And at the worst, if we lose our entire army, we can always do a little bit of a performance and maybe gain some groupies and then they can join us. And then we can level those farmers and peasant women up into something fantastic, which is exactly what I'm attempting to do right now. So, yeah. Pretty nice. Unfortunately, we captured a couple of enemies. Did not really want to do that, but that's okay. Let's perform the upgrading. And we could take some other things here. Not really anything that I really badly want. Ooh, this is a better hat. I mean, really. We have to have a pointy hat, don't we? We really do need a pointy hat. Because we are pointy hat adult, of course. So let's just take the rest of these just to sell them whenever we so desire. And there you go. Okay, so how many people have leveled up here? Oh, nice. 21 of those. And we are going to gain some swordsmen here and five footmen. Yeah, the experience was not the greatest. But I, yeah, by the way, did gain another companion. So that's pretty cool. And some of our companions have leveled up too. Now let's level up our charisma. Get a little bit more in persuasion. I'm actually thinking maybe I should go for trainer skill. You know, I should really just start going for trainer skill now because by the time we are at 24 charisma, we should have two points. Uh, no, one point in it. We'll have one point in it. So I suppose that's okay. Anyway, that will be it for this episode. Next time, we're going to continue our journeys around Calradia and we're going to go to Tharok's Gate. And actually, that was the lynching mob, I suppose. But maybe we'll be able to fight some dwarves instead. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.